Well, hello, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Today, we're excited because we're talking about questions. What would a conversation be without a bunch of questions? What would a class be without a bunch of questions? Yeah, it'd be very dull, wouldn't it? Dull, boring, dosen. We don't want to do that. So we want to have the ability to ask, 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 and ask correctly. So um, the types of questions we'll be covering today. Um, the first type is what we can consider normal types of questions. Um, secondly, we'll be covering subject questions. Thirdly, indirect questions. And then we'll get into maybe some prepositional types of questions. So questions with preposition. So the first type of question we'll talk about is what we can consider a, a normal interrogative form. <clears throat> so a normal question, as you guys, guys love saying normal, um, would use what we call inversion. Okay, and inversion is where the verb comes before the subject. For example, do you like, hmm, do you like, okay, Bobby. Yeah. Of course, this is a yes or no question because we begin the question with a helping verb, auxiliary verb, but this is where the inversion is when the verb comes before the subject here. Okay, this you is the subject, okay, and the verb is do. Okay, that is inversion. That is a normal question. Now, we can make it more specific. We can, we can, uh, if we don't want to ask a yes or no question, we can put a WH word in front. Why? For example, I love that question, don't you? Why? Why do you like chabapi? Well, because it tastes good. It's juicy. It melts in your mouth. The smell is, there's nothing like it. So this is not yes or no. We're, we're, we're digging for specific information. So, normal, normal questions can be asked pretty much with any tense. So, the thing about English, and I'll say this very quickly, we usually answer as we're asked. It's a form of reciprocity. Um, you give what I give you. You give me something, I'm going to take the same thing and give it back. Do you like chibapi? Yes, I do. Did you eat chibapi yesterday? No, I didn't. Have you ever eaten chibapi? Yes, I have. So we always, well, I hate saying always, but we usually answer the same way something is asked. We have to pay close attention and listen very closely. Now, let us talk about a subject question, okay? Um, now, a subject question is simply where we don't have what we call this inversion, okay? We have something like this. This is very, uh, very simple. What happened? Okay, this what is more or less taking the subject, okay? Okay, um... So, which countries have, or which countries serve the best food? Okay, there is no auxiliary verb here, so they're a little not so normal, if you want to say that, but the WH word takes the subject, and we don't use a helping verb. Okay, so... We can see some examples um, for some subject questions. Which countries border Croatia? All right. Now here you can see there is no helping verb. Okay. And you can see what happened. Now, there is an exception, like everything. 
Now, who didn't receive the email? Okay, this is negated. This is a negative form, and in negative forms, negative subject questions, we do use the, the helping verb or the auxiliary verb. Okay, so I don't think that will give us so much trouble, but the next one will. This, oh goodness, get ready for this one, guys. This is the indirect question. Now, let's talk about the indirect question. All right. We just talked about inversion, and inversion is when the helping verb comes before the subject, such as this. Do you speak Croatian? Okay. So this is normal. Now, let's make it not so normal. Let's make it indirect. Indirect is what you can consider nia normal. Okay, nia. Okay, so this is not your normal question. We have here in the normal question, the helping verb before the subject. And then we have the, in, the main verb speak, which is the infinitive in this case. Now, when we make it indirect, okay, we will eliminate the inversion, okay? It is more or less like a positive or affirmative form. You speak Croatian, okay? Now, there are many types of indirect questions, and they even will, uh, even uh, reported speech types of questions are indirect and indirect statements. The big picture here is an indirect question is when the question is preceded by some kind of uh, sentence or phrase. So we have a phrase in front. Now, the most common phrases would be, ah, uh, could you tell me, um, oh, could you tell me, do you know, uh, I don't know. Um, these sort of things that usually um, we can use these if we're, let's say, for example, in a foreign country and we want to ask a stranger for directions. You would then ask, excuse me, sir, or madam, or just excuse me, could you tell me blah, 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 blah. Then you have your indirect. Now, there's two ways. Okay, first, um, if it's yes or no, okay, like this question, we add if. Okay, that's the first rule. Could you tell me if you speak Croatian? Okay, this if is very important. The other alternative we can use is whether. We can also use whether, not like vreme, okay? Weather. Weather, okay? So could you tell me whether you speak Croatian? So the, that if is for yes or no questions. Okay, now, if we do not have a yes or no question and we have a WH question, we do not use if. We just keep the question word there. For example, Uh, let's think of something good. What did you eat? Last night. Don't tell me it was chivapi. All right. We've had enough chivapi. Um, so let's look at this. Now, first of all, what tense is this? Yes. You're exactly right. It's past simple. We see the helping verb there. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to eliminate this helping verb did. Now, once we eliminate this verb, it's, it's out of the picture. We have a problem because now the infinitive eat 
is not past tense. We have to make it past tense. We have to change it to eight. Eight changes to eight. We do not change tense when we change direct to indirect. We have to keep the same time. So this is the new verb. So simply put, um, do you know what you ate last night? Could you tell me what you ate last night? I don't know what I ate last night. Do you know what I ate last night? Okay, so that's an indirect question. We must practice a lot with these types of questions. Now, um, the last type that we'll cover is <clears throat> prepositions. Okay? Now, we'll just read it verbatimly. When we are asking about the object of a preposition, the preposition usually goes at the end of the question. What are you looking at? How long did you wait for? We don't say for how long did you wait or at what are you looking? Now, you might get some very smart grammarians out there who say you should never end a question with a preposition. Well, guess what? They're not right. <laughs> you may end a question with a preposition. We do this all the time, and we have done it for hundreds of years to avoid the, the odd wordiness at the beginning of the question. Okay, now, um, informality, when we're talking about the formality, okay, um, sometimes we do. In this example here, for whom did she work? Now, this is exceptional. This form is more formal. We would not really say this in normal circumstances. We would normally say, who did she work for? Not whom did she work for? We can say whom did she work for, but we usually do not if it is used as a subject, even though it is the object of for. It is the style. Um, however, if we use for at the beginning, we must use whom after. This is called in, in language pie piping. Pied piping. That doesn't matter. But anyway, what we need to know is if we use who after for, we need to say whom. If we use it at the beginning, who did she work for? Or we can say, for whom did she work? Which is a bit, hmm, it's a bit posh, may we say. Very posh. Okay. So, anyway, let's do some, let's do some uh, exercise. Okay. Now, these are dealing with indirect forms. Okay. So, we're going to change these to indirect form. This is what I'm most concerned about with you guys because you make these mistakes so often. Okay, now, what time will you be arriving? Okay, um, let's say, do you know what time you will be arriving? See? Do you know what time you'll be arriving? Is it going to rain? Okay, do you think it is going to rain? Okay, do you think it's going to rain? How many languages do they speak in India? Do you have any idea how many languages they speak? What does the museum, what time does the museum close? Do you have any idea what time the museum closes? Those are the answers. Now, let me tell you one little trick. Okay? Um, for example,
where is the museum? Okay, is this direct or indirect? Yes, it's direct. Where's the museum? Okay. Make it indirect, we need to what? We need to, do you know where the museum is? Is goes at the end. Okay. Now, um, we will do a lot of practice with this. You guys need to do your homework and you need to be very aware about this inversion and the elimination of the inversion with the indirect forms. So I hope you've enjoyed a little lecture and good luck with your homework. Thanks. See you in class.